of Ireland Football Championship. Back here at Croke Park, we're in counting down the minutes before the start of this year's All-Ireland Football Final. We've just had the toss of the coin. Kerry won that and they will play from left to right as you watch the match. And indeed, who better to count down those moments with other than the two men who've had the honour of leading their counties out in this year's big match. That's the two captains, Kerry's Declan O'Sullivan and the Tyrone captain, Brian Doher. I suppose it's been on for any footballer to be captain in their county, but I suppose going to an all final is extra special, you know, and the great thing about being from, coming from Kerry, I suppose there's a lot of winning Kerry captains around the place, so, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not seen as a big deal, you know, so that's good from my point of view, you know, and there's a lot of former Kerry captains, you know, winning captains in the squad, like Liam Hess is famous mine and Derek Canada last year, you know, so all of those have helped, you know, and I just kind of kept my head down, you know, worked hard and not let it affect me as much as possible, you know. Get to a back in Ireland final, I don't remember too much of it, 2003, it was passed before you know it. And it'll, I'm sure it'll be the same with this final. It's over in the blink of an eye, so hopefully we'll enjoy it and do the best we can. We've went about it the hard way, but we can't complain, it's, we're still in it. And we're still playing football in September, and that's what our aim was at the start of the year. The boys, to be fair, they've dug deep, and they've put in the work, and they've dug deep and they've had to dig deep. And, Thankfully we've got draws where we need the draws to get out of jail and then the second day we've got away with victories. So we've been lucky so far, so hopefully it may continue. Going back to 2003, you know, certainly we didn't seem to be ready that day for the for the type of game uh, Tyrone played, you know, and, and it did hurt a lot of fellas, you know, and, and certainly we've we've progressed immensely since that, you know, and, and we've matured a lot as a team, you know, the, team, the management that they came in, you know, they, they leave no stone unturned in the preparations for games and we certainly, we've... Uh, a lot of work done in this in preparation for this game, you know, and Tyrone have played nine championship games, you know, and each championship game has been tough and physical and hard and tight as well. And certainly they've come through all those games, you know, with, with flying colours. So certainly there aren't too many weaknesses there to exploit. And certainly there'll be a big challenge for us come next Sunday, but, you know, we, we're prepared for that challenge. Everybody knows what Kerry are, like the, the, probably the best pedigree in football that there is. And nobody matched in that way. This year they've been playing some brilliant football, so they have... They've basically steamrolled Cork in the semi-final, which we rated Cork as one of our best teams and hardest oppositions during the league. So that was no main fit, and we're under no illusions about how good Kerry are coming into this final. And for the fact that Kerry were back in the Ireland final, having won it the year before, says a lot about them. We couldn't do it last year, and they've done it this year, and they've done it with a lot of style. So we know we're, we're up against it, but that's what football is about. Yeah, those are the men who have led the teams out, as I said, here at Croke Park on All Ireland final day. And you know, gentlemen, Colin Rourke and Joe Brawley, after all the advice over the years you've given to Brian Doher, here he is, <laughs> the Tyrone captain, and he may be getting his hands on Sam McGuire today. Yeah, well, well he's I, some I, man, I, Doher, I'll tell you, he is some man. He was being interviewed during the week and he said that it was in 2003 there was such hype in Tyrone that he was glad to be out in the hillsides at three in the morning fixing prolapsed uterus. <laughs> and, and you know, that was the only piece he got in Tyrone, and I could see why, because the place is football obsessed. But he's some man, really, and you know, you must take your hat off to his endeavour. And himself and McWigan, for me, are the two most important players in the Tyrone team. I think to take the hat off is what I have done in the past, and I suppose. Uh, I made him notorious, or he made me notorious, I don't know which it was, but uh, I think the important thing about Brian Dewar as captain is that he would have the total respect of all Absolutely, the players yes. on his team, yeah. you know, and that's, yeah. that comes with age, it comes with playing well, a certain was, type of game. At, I was looking at clips like of all of old matches, we yeah. call them for, for the want of a better word, yeah. uh, of Tyrone t teams over the last seven, eight years, and there was Brian Dewar in the middle of the But moment. he sets example by what he does, it's not by what he says, yeah. it's yes, just sure. by the way he plays, you know, and he's a, it's a level of honest endeavour. A disciple for the team, you know, yeah. and he puts his body on the line every time, yeah. and, you know, he really is, like, uh, Whereas he's it, a terrific the Kerry, fella. The Kerry captain, Declan O'Sullivan, of course, is the old system where the winning uh, club championship club champions, nominate yeah, their yeah. captain, so him yeah. from Drummond Pierce as he gets the captaincy. I often think that it's too big a burden on a very young player. Ah, yeah. But he has made the point there yeah. in his interview that he has so yeah, many experienced yeah. captains around him yeah. that it probably doesn't make that much difference. Like yeah. Captain and Kerry <laughs> is of no real <laughs> significance true. because, you know, the players go out and yeah. they do their own thing. They won't need uh, Declan O'Sullivan to tell them what yeah. to do. 
Yeah, we, by the way, lads, when you're talking, they were just kind of watching the teams line up because they will be meeting mm. the president, Mary McAleese, in just a moment. These will be the, the real teams, if you like. And Peter yeah. Canavan, I think, is there amongst... Uh, yeah, he's in the middle of that shot so, uh, there. He so, needs... Um, he, he, he needs to be president careful. at least. Yeah. Sorry, Michael. He needs, to, he needs to be careful if he starts because you know he tends to get very revved up, which is why I thought it was a good idea, apart from anything else, to bring him in at yeah. time. He does get very he revved, got up, revved up another day here when he came on as a sub as well. So yeah, and it also tends to rev up the opposition, you know. But uh, I mean, so be it. If they're going to play him, they're obviously not going to play him for the full 70 minutes. And uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll await with interest to see what actually happens. Yeah, as I said, that is our speculation. But uh, right now here at Croke Park, we have indeed the arrival of the president of Ireland, Mary McAleese, and uh, Sean Kelly is there with her of course president of the GEA and president uh, McAleese's husband Martin behind as well president McAleese a great GEA supporter great northern football supporter she would admit to have letting a few roars at a few matches herself in her time <laughs> presumably not since she took office she takes a presidential salute So on a very pleasant sunny afternoon, the last Sunday in September, President McAleese now accompanied by Sean Kelly, President of the GAA, up the wrong common Luke Laskell, going down to meet Brian Dewar first of all, and the big giant of a man alongside him, Tasco McConnell, both goalkeepers in this final, very, very tall and imposing figures, Davy Hart there, there's Connor Gormley from Carrick Moore and Philip Jordan, big man in midfield is Sean Kavanagh of course, through the line then to Ryan Mellon and Peter Canavan forward with him Stephen O'Neill and the uh, bleach bombshell himself Owen Mulligan referee this afternoon is uh, Mick Monaghan from Kildare Garoy de Canova to most quickly will be the two men on the line this afternoon big huge day for them as well the sideline and fourth official Derek Fahey and the umpires are uh, John Joe Byrne, Kieran O'Donnell, John O'Toole and Jack Monaghan who of course is a brother of Mick Monaghan and so on to meet the Kerry lads and it's uh, Declan O'Sullivan the captain doing the introductions that's uh, Mike McCarthy there scored his first ever point in the championship in the last match the semi-final against Cork Seamus Moynihan the longest serving man Dara O'Shea who missed last year's final William Kirby there as well down along the line the big man in the centre Owen Brosnan Liam Hassett, he's a lot of experience, and the man who will be central to most things, Colin Cooper there, alongside last year's captain, who is Dara O'Kineda. And Sean Kelly, well, the president, that's uh, President McAleese, may have a word about uh, our, about Tyrone, rather, and hope that they win, but I'm sure president uh, of the GAA, Sean Kelly, is hoping that Kerry will win. We'll have all the action coming up immediately. Croke Park here in Dublin, the centre of the sporting world as far as Gaelic Games is concerned, ready for the All-Ireland Football Final, the 65th match in this year's championship. Let's check on the team news for the afternoon then. And Kerry's team for this final shows one change from the semi-final lineup. Last year's captain Dara Okineda gets the nod ahead of Brian Sheehan, which means that the champions start with 13 on the side that easily beat Mayo Mott last September. Seamus Moynihan, a sub, then is back among the half back line, and Dara O'Shea, injured last year, has returned to midfield. And the star of that last victory is here as well. Colin Cooper finished last year with a goal and five points. I wonder what's in store this afternoon for the Gooch. Well, the big news in Tyrone on Thursday was the selection of Peter Canavan to start this afternoon. It's also his 50th championship appearance. Joe McMahon has been confirmed to play at full-back. Ender McGinley parked with Sean Kavanagh in the centre of the park, while Ryan Mellon moves out to wing forward. However, the team's leading marksman this year has been Stephen O'Neill, and today it's his 25th championship start. So everything is in readiness alongside me here. I've got Martin Carney. Your views, Martin? Well, Jerry's the game I'm really looking forward to. I feel myself on the one hand, uh, Carrier timing their challenge very well. They've had a leisurely and trouble-free path to the final, and actually they've conceded no goals in the way. And I think, you know, they're indignant that they haven't been afforded respect up to now, so they'll be hoping, certainly, to reclaim their status today. And it's against that, Jerome will be trying to maintain the Northern Indian side on, on Kerry teams and get at Kerry early on. I think it's very important from a Tyrone point of view that there are no lapses of concentration, that they start well and actually are in the game coming into the last 10 minutes. OK, we'll be hearing from Martin throughout the afternoon. Meanwhile, let's get a verdict from the panel. Michael. 
Joe Bradley, who's going to win this All Ireland final of 2005? Well, Colin said Tyrone have never played anyone like Kerry, and the converse is right. Kerry haven't met anyone like Tyrone this year, and whilst Kerry on paper do I agree look the better team, Tyrone are battle hardened, and they're they're more than the sum of their parts. I think Tyrone can win this match. Tyrone for Joe Bradley, Colin. Well, I think Tyrone's best chance is to make it a close game into the last 10 minutes, which becomes unknown territory for Kerry. But I think Kerry have been waiting for the last two years for today. I think they're going to deliver big time. Split vote in the panel. It's time to join our commentators for the 2005 All Ireland Football Final, and they are once again Martin Carney and Jure Canny. Well, every final has its own charm, but each one comes with a number of subplots. I suppose the abiding memory of the 2003 semi-final, well, it's still a raw wound with many Kerry followers. You know, words like ambushed and uh, swarm defence were two of the phrases then in quite common currency. Against that, Tyrone brought their own game plan that day, their own blueprint for victory, and it ultimately brought them their first ever All-Ireland final triumph. You wonder what's in store for Gooch and company this afternoon. In many ways, this could be a game which is quite a defining moment for Kerry football. They are the favourites, yet they'll feel the need to master one of the big Ulster teams in the All-Ireland final itself. That's what Declan O'Sullivan and his team are here to do. And when they proclaim down in Kerry, as some of the speechmakers do, that winning Sam is part of what they're about, bringing the famous trophy back to the natural home and so on, that often provokes the opposition. Let's see what's in store this afternoon. The national anthem is going to be sung for us now by three Kerry men who hail from Cahar Savin in the kingdom. They are the Macron. It's time for the Sam Maguire showpiece. Tremendous atmosphere, wonderful colour. As you heard, Kerry won the toss. They up to play from left to right as we'll be looking at the pictures, which means they'll be playing it towards the canal end goal, and they have a slight breeze behind them. Surface is perfect. Day ideal building up the whole time in Dublin all through the weekend. Enormous pressure on players everywhere and anywhere. Seamus Moynihan has gone across to pick up Brian Doher. Flags waving proudly on the hill and all around the terraces and stands. All eyes on the match referee. And Mick Monaghan from Kildare starts the 116th All-Ireland football final and straight away possession with Liam Hassett for Kerry. Trying to set up Owen Brosnan, stumbling initially. Looking for support, getting it from Dara O'Shea. Kerry looking for the opening score just to settle them down. Taking their time about it, Dara O'Shea outside his own at the Tyrone 45 metre line. It's Tomos O'Shea, his brother, who fires it in. Intended for Declan O'Sullivan. He was restraining the defender, however. Early free kick. What was significant there, actually, Ger, is that Owen Brosnan has gone in full forward, and I'd say you'll get a lot of high balls going in to try and exploit the height difference between Owen Brosnan and his fullback. And also the question marks that have existed all throughout this championship about that Tyrone fullback line. They may answer their critics. They've been struggling all season to find somebody to wear that number three spot and to play the game there and command the position. Meanwhile, it's Brian McGuigan who's commanding. Stopped going across there. Stopped brilliantly indeed by Seamus Moynihan. The counter-attack by Kerry. It comes out towards Mark O'Shea. His brother Darrow slowing it down in midfield. Good ball across to Declan O'Sullivan. Look where he's come. Out into the centre of the park. Taking on Duher. Stops him initially. Referee blows his whistle. Stopping was unfairly done. 
It's in as far as Colm Cooper. Gooch against Mac Miniman. That's uh, an interesting looking kick. It's a very good start by Kerry. And Gooch is off to a flyer. Inside the opening two minutes, Colm Cooper getting the first score of the match. Setting Kerry on their way, at least their followers would like to think so. He got a goal and four against McMenamin when they met back in the league in April. Yeah, we'll go back and credit Seamus Moynihan for the wonderful intercept at the far side of the field of McGuigan and the quality of the crossfield ball that brought about that wonderful finish from Cooper. Here's McGee. Michael McGee setting it up for Philip Jordan. Again, taking back a good return here. Jordan. Tyrone looking to make a good start to this match. That's not the best of passes. Stephen O'Neill has to come back. Do well. O'Mahony is his marker. Not the best of balls taken up there by Moynihan. Comes out to the centre to Dara O'Shea. Kerry working it away cleverly. Once again, Declan O'Sullivan down long towards Owen Brosnan. That's an interesting switch. Playing him in there at full forward. Taking on Joe McMahon. Kicking truly, kicking accurately. And Kerry with a second score. Two really good attacks by Kerry. The first point by Cooper, the second, no question about it, credited to Owen Brosnan. What a kick. Yeah, Brilliant their, accuracy. Their football is so assured here. The quality of the foot passing there, the calmness, the ability to pick out Declan O'Sullivan, who's getting a free reign at the moment and doesn't seem to be picked up close enough by Conor Gormley. But the quality of that finish again, top class. So now Tyrone comes searching for a score or two just to settle them down. Into the middle, fisted down by Ender McGinley. There could be a lot of broken ball around midfield this afternoon. Connor Gormley dragged to the ground this time by Liam Hassett. Referee just doing a little bit of ticking there. It's Liam Hassett who goes into the referee's notebook just for that indiscretion. Any more of that, and he will get a card. Remember a few times we've watched uh, Tyrone this year, they've been very slow to settle, actually. It stays the same. Duhar with a great ball in towards Canavan, let it slip, however. And that was the opportunity for Kerry to seize the initiative, take it back there. Mike McCarthy doing well. It comes out as far as Moynihan to the centre. Kerry looks so assured. Their handling is well, their movement is exquisite. And even there, when it almost ran away from Declan O'Sullivan, and the ball still, well, it didn't quite hold in for William Kirby to keep in play. Nervous start made by Tyrone. McGuigan. Mulligan very close to him. Offloaded in the end there as far as Sean Cavanagh. Can be a real rallying force in midfield. Mulligan's gone very, very deep into the centre. Up there is Gormley. Connor Gormley has just about played everywhere this year. Played out as far as Ryan Mellon. Great kick over the bar. Tyrone's opening score. It's taken just under five minutes to produce, but credited to Ryan Mellon from Moy. This is a player who had a virus during 2003, missed all of that championship, didn't make his debut at this level until this season. That was a great kick. Yeah, and a lovely little twin incision that time by both Gormley and I think it was Owen Mulligan, but a fine finish that time by Mellon. The battle for possession in the middle of the field. Won this time by Tyrone, settling to the task now with McGinley. Great athlete in the centre of the field. McGuigan, great footballing brain. Outside to Mellon again. Somebody needs to pick him up in a Kerry jersey. Good looking shot, curls in. Teams are level. Ryan Mellon's kicked two points. Playing in his first All Ireland football final. What a start. Yes, indeed, but the hook kick that time from uh, Brian McGuigan over his shoulder didn't seem to be, you know, just totally instinctive. Fabulous score again by Mellon, but it was the pass to set it up, Jer. Let's hope it continues. There's a lot of quality out there. Again, straight down the middle, collected and won by Kerry this time by Declan O'Sullivan. Paul Galvin. Letting it go in early, but a little bit inaccurate. Well, it comes off as Gus Cooper made a good move. This is a great looking opportunity. Ends up in the back of the net, and it's Daro Gineda. Six minutes are gone. The opening goal credited to Daro Gineda. Cooper made it. The pass seemed to have gone astray from Galvin. Kick to space. 
but look at how Cooper made it his great run, then great vision inside, and Okineda finishes his 11th ever goal in Championship football, and Kerry lead 1-2 to two points. Yes, and again, Declan O'Sullivan won that breakout in the middle of the park. He's going out there, he's leaving a two-man inside line, but again, the speed of transfer from, from Gooch that time uh, was what made the score, and Koneja finished with a plum. Interesting that uh, kick out there was taken from out near the exclusion zone. And it's going to be a free kick in any case. Ball handled on the ground, it's going to be a free to Tyrone. Peter Canavan letting it fly inside to Mulligan. After Tyrone had made such a good recovery, that's a good shot. They're going score for score. That'll do Mulligan's confidence an awful lot of good. His first of the afternoon. So now just two points between the teams. What a bright start to this final. It's bright, it's breezy, it's very entertaining. Game ebbing and flowing, going from side to side, but the quality of the passing, the quality of the vision is top class. Just going back to that goal, when Galvin hit that ball, it looked like it was a, a no-hoper for anybody to get onto, but Cooper was fast about his business and made it his. And again, you know, Jack O'Connor's inclusion of uh, Okanage in the team was fully justified again with that goal. Well, we've had six shots at the target so far in this match, and it's produced six scores, three per team, but that goal, all important for the kingdom, as Tomas O'Shea sets it back to Declan O'Sullivan. Tyrone have got to be a lot tighter on O'Sullivan. He's central to most of their attacking ideas so far. That's a good enterprising ball over. Falls to Brosnan. Nice score. Oh, no, it's put wide. Should have been over the bar. Great opportunity for Brosnan. Yeah, you can see the lack of authority under a high ball there in the Tyrone full back line. And again, Tomas O'Shea's quality of the, you know, with the cross field kick actually is what exploited at that time. And Tyrone are going to have to tighten up, as you said, Ger, further out the field in trying to kind of neutralise the quality coming through. I remember being in Killarney that afternoon when they played in the league and everybody says, you know, disregard what happens in the league. Sometimes you could do, sometimes you don't. But they try that ploy the whole time, the right half forward, playing a diagonal ball across towards Cooper. Here comes Kirby, centre of the field, trying to win possession. Mark O'Shea. Darrow O'Shea dodging around Peter Canavan, who's gone deep, drags his man. That'll get a ticking for him. Name recorded. Yeah, surprisingly, Peter Canavan is playing out around the half-forward line, more on, uh, you know, half-forward to midfield, and again leaving a Mulligan and uh, Stephen O'Neill inside. Well, they're hoping to exploit just a two-man attack. Meanwhile, it's William Kirby who's doing a bit of exploiting, and there's a Kerry player down on the ground in front of the goal. It's Colin Cooper is down. Play continues. Referee hasn't spotted it. The booing in the background will tell you the crowd have. Seamus Moynihan back here as far as Declan O'Sullivan. Coming through again is Darrow O'Shea. Cooper is still down. O'Shea attacking... And it's taken by McMenamin. Stopped there by Owen Brosnan momentarily. And the booing is from the Kerry fans. And Cooper is down and some of the Tyrone players think he's play-acting. And they've told him get up on his feet again as quickly as possible. He's getting attention out of shot. Play continues. Down as far as Stephen O'Neill. Transferred. Oh, that's a high one to the face of Brian Doher by Liam Hassett. And the referee will call him back. Yeah, that's a bad tackle actually that time, Ger, but again, a lot of the Kerry players are incensed with uh, what happened under the other goal line versus Gooch is still on the ground. Ryan McMenamin, I think, may have been involved with Cooper back at the other end. He's his marker for the afternoon, and Cooper just didn't drop to the ground accidentally. Yeah, I couldn't see what happened with Cooper and Ryan McMahon at that time. Liam Hassett has picked up a yellow card, actually. And again, his tackle that time we did see, and it was a bad tackle on Brian Doher. Doher back on his feet. Let's hope there aren't too many more subplots. The referee now going back down the field. And he'll check with his umpires, surely, if they had a really good view as to what happened to Cooper. Yeah, by, by all appearance with the charter physio in there, he appears to have had a, a finger in the eye or something like that, because it's definitely the eye uh, that has been treated. If uh, knee worry is the physio. It would be a shame, actually, if Ryan McManaman you know, gets a red card on this, because it was one of the duels we were looking forward to. The last day they played against each other, I think Gooch scored one four in them. It started well today, but at least I think if the umpire saw what happened, I think the referee is going to have one choice only. Now, what did they see, and uh, what have they told the referee? Well, he hasn't isolated uh, Ryan McMenamin at all so far, hasn't spoken to him. 
all attention is on Colum Cooper, who is just 22 years of age, playing in his 26th championship match. Further out the field, all marking arrangements being uh, examined and looked at. A run by Mulligan maybe in a moment, Mike McCarthy ready to track it. Well, you know, Ryan McMenon is his marker, but uh, Pascal McConnell probably came out to challenge as well if there was a loose ball in that time where Colin Cooper got injured. But clearly the umpires have spoken to the referee, either nothing happened or they said it was a completely accidental collision. Well, that seems to be the case because the referee has ignored uh, Ryan McMenamin completely and gone up now to watch Stephen O'Neill take the free in. Remember, two points between them. Stephen O'Neill on his left boot. Didn't quite measure it as he wanted to. Just a little bit out for his uh, distance, maybe. Very close to the sideline when he was hitting that one. So the game's settling down after 12 and a half minutes. Early burst of scoring, an opening goal. Controversy or two as well. Some dragging and restraining. Free to Kerry, taken quickly by O'Sullivan. Liam Hassett back towards Moynihan once again. Quick look around to see who's moving. From a deep position came Dara O'Shea. From an even deeper position came his brother, who's Mark O'Shea. Little dodge around the fullback. That's a horrible kick in the end by Mark O'Shea after the approach had been so promising, after he managed to take it around Joe McMahon and left him for dead. Should have been a score there. Yeah, Dara put that in a plate for him. It was a beautiful pass, wonderful sidestep, but a terrible finish. And he's normally not a bad finisher, even if he does wear number two for Kerry. He's got four points in championship football in the past. Yeah, again, this thing of kicking across the ball sometimes, you know, it, it, when, it, when it's bad, when that slice is bad, it can be very, very bad, as it was in that case. Pascal McConnell. Fisted back by William Kirby. Breaks picked up once again here. Connor Gormley. Looking around to see who's available. It's Jordan coming forward. Philip Jordan. Again, needing some assistance. McGuigan out here to do her, the team captain. Setting off, trying to get through a gap. None available. He charged with the ball. Referee awarding the free out to Kerry. Getting caught in a cul-de-sac that time. Greater flair in imagination and attacking has come from Kerry in the game so far, but only two points in it. This is a good burst this time by Tom O'Sullivan. And everybody else has got to, had a chance to come forward and attack during this year's championship. Galvin had a lot of work to do. That was a poor ball from O'Sullivan. Did well to hold on to it. That's good ball retention by Kerry. Mark O'Shea dropping it in deep, gathered in well by Ryan McMenham, surrounded then by Kerry players. Two years ago, it would have been Tyrone doing that to Kerry. Kerry have learned. Philip Jordan breaking forward. Duhar. The ball carrying this time is done by Philip Jordan. Outside of the boot to Owen Mulligan, taking on to Mike McCarthy on his left-hand side. High in the air, easy one for the goalkeeper. David Murphy has been a model of consistency this season. Yeah, very interesting in that tack. Seamus Moynihan is staying right back in, full, in, in, in front of the full-back line, not following his man out the field at all, and anticipating the ball coming into the two inside forwards. It was great defending by Moynihan of space. This is great play by Dara O'Shea. McGuigan coming into challenge. Once again, kicked ahead by Mark O'Shea. Dara O'Kinady lets it spill. Once again, the man with the white boots this time, sometimes in the past they've been blue, Ryan McMenamin. Support here from Davy Hart, popping up on the left-hand side. Outside of the boot, inside for O'Neill. Taking Aidan O'Mahony with him, well out of position. Kerry don't mind, all this while Moynihan is back, minding the house if needs be, if there's ever a, a break in the consistency. There isn't. And once again, it's Declan O'Sullivan laying it off beautifully. Tomas O'Shea now. Again, they hold possession, play it around, then probe for an opening if one is available. Brosnan's a good leader of the attack. Comes, gathers, strikes, and scores. Great point. That's two for Brosnan. That's magnificent athleticism. Started again with a great tackle by Paul Gavin out underneath this here, Ger. But again, the patience of the, of the O'Shea is holding up the ball, giving the quality ball into Brosnan, then who finished very, very well.
lots of teams we've watched in this year's championship attempt the possession game and then it breaks down and the crowd get on their own team Kerry know how to finish it oh absolutely the smoothness of interchange is just wonderful to watch the athleticism the, the, the sheer verve and imagination of the players tremendous jar now how will Tyrone counter it McConnell pass it under it here did he handle the ball on the ground? He did. It's going to be a free to Tyrone. I'm just making the point, how will the counter it, Ger? I feel myself they'll have to move the ball inside a little bit quicker. They're overholding it around the middle of the field and occasionally running into traffic. They've moved Canavan back into the inside forward line. Here he is now, coming, collecting. Might have even picked it off the ground, laid it off beautifully back to McGuigan. Oh, side netting. Should have been, he should have tested the goalkeeper. Hit it instinctively, curses his luck. And they're cursing their luck as well. Yeah, he went for the impossible one, Jerry. He had Mulligan to his right. It's not unusual for, uh, for McGuigan to spawn a person in a better uh, position. Took the shot, hit the side netting. Two goals in his career so far in uh, championship football for Brian McGuigan. Meanwhile, Declan O'Sullivan, free reign to orchestrate everything in the centre of the field. This is a very talented and skillful player. Good shoulder that time by Conor Gormley. Comes back out this time to William Kirby from Austin Stax in Tralee. Challenging there with Enda McGinley. Galvin holding it up. Player down is Paul Galvin. Dewar was the man who came in to challenge him, the Tyrone captain. Galvin needs attention. Yeah, again, Brian Dewar caught him late that time and probably will be booked for that tackle. Well, he's also already been uh, the victim of one or two heavy challenges. And on this occasion, it's his turn to experience the referee's displeasure. Yellow card for Duher. Yeah, just going back to the role that Declan O'Sullivan has, actually, it seems to me that Davy Hart is picking him up, Ger. Just going back to this again, Brian Duer's coming in, hit him across the face, certainly. Deserved to get booked. There we go once again, no doubt about it. Kerry come with Seamus Moynihan going for a score straight at the goalkeeper Pascal McConnell here's Joe McMahon 22 year old student from the St Endes club in Oma right across the face of his own goal that's a good ball had to be precise Michael McGee from Lock McCrory well, everybody ahead of him was picked up and blocked so he has to go laterally Kerry's work in defence is admirable. McGuigan, that's a great outlet ball that time for Davy Hart. Now he's well capable of putting it over the bar from here. He's done it in the past. He doesn't do it on this occasion. Well, a couple of very good points at this year's championship, but that's three wides now by Tyrone. Great point you're actually about the Kerry full back time. The runs of uh, O'Neill and Mulligan that time were so well policed by Michael McCarthy and Tom Sullivan. It was very difficult to get the ball through to them. The Kerry full back line are really on their game at the moment. Just trying to look at that Tyrone inside forward line and trying to define what they're all doing. It can be quite difficult. They're trying to play two inside forwards, a one man off the two, and they're changing that around somewhat. Here's Mulligan. The deep player right now is Stephen O'Neill, but it's Duher coming through. And he was taken down unceremoniously this time by Seamus Moynihan. And the referee is going to call him across, show him his number. And uh, Seamus Moynihan is shown the black book, the notebook. So he's ticked for that. Any more of that, and he gets a yellow. And the Tyrone fans feel he should have got a yellow for that one there. Just so Brian Duhar this time actually went over in his ankle in the tackle. You can see it there just a moment or two ago, and he stands on his foot there. Accidentally, it must be said. Duhar has picked up three or four very hard knocks up to now, and that can tell later on in a game, Ger. It was down at that goal bout against Kerry that uh, Brian Canavan got an ankle injury in the semi-final in 2003. And right now it's Brian Duhar ex experiencing the pain of it all. From the Clonagwell Club. Well, very durable and resilient lad, but certainly a number of those spells, the accumulative effect can be very, very damaging. You know, lots of hefty knocks, great support, however. Up on the hill today, it's a nice mix of red and white and green and gold. No one county predominating. Mulligan has kicked one already from play. And this one has just about gone in that side, that left-hand post. Swung around, but he's got it. And it's a second for Owen Mulligan, eating into the gap. So two points the margin once again after 21 minutes of play.
I think it's the first score in about 13 minutes, actually, Jared. They've had quite a few attacks, but the Kerry full back line have been getting top marks up to now. Kerry looked the better side in the opening quarter of this match, but Tyrone are only two points behind and looking dangerous. Once again, it's Tomas O'Shea letting it fly. Bad ball. Easily read by Conor Gormley. Nobody on him. Let out to the very durable Brian Duver. Huge one down. Taken beautifully in his stride by Aidan O'Mahony. Beautiful catch. Great defensive work. Back out to Mark O'Shea again it comes. From Dara O'Shea as far as William Kirby. Beating the challenge. Over a half hour to challenge at that. Kirby letting it fly in there dangerously. And that's going to be a 45. Went off the goalkeeper, Pascal McConnell. Well, he was taking no chances, would you, with Colin Cooper hanging around? You're just getting to the two sets of players at the moment. A lot of the Kerry better players, a lot of the more stellar players are playing very well, but we haven't seen anything. That's a well punched away, actually, by the goalkeeper. But Sean Kavner hasn't touched the ball yet, Jer, which is very surprising considering he's so important to the Tyrone setup. He's vital to the Tyrone setup. You expect to have him. Maybe he's not the greatest fielder in uh, modern day Gaelic football at this level, but you expect to see him making those runs through the centre. Well, it's a testimony to the work Jack O'Connor has done and actually preparing his team to counteract this threat that he's been so quiet up to now. Dara O'Shea to take it. Goal scorer after Dara O'Kinade, or rather, after six minutes. Goalkeeper comes again, but he's left it behind this time, and that could have flown into the back of the net, and it was Owen Brosnan who was up there, getting a fist to that one. From the 45, from Darrow Kineda, watch again here for Owen Brosnan arriving. There you go, goalkeeper came, committed himself, but left it behind. In fairness, the two cornerbacks were on the line to actually counteract it if it had been going at the goal, but uh, Pascal McConnell would be disappointed that he didn't get their force in that case. He's a big man, McConnell, 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 Always uses the tee, gets plenty of elevation in it. Once again, Tyrone trying to win something in midfield. They're being cleaned out in that area. William Kirby, back to Dara O'Shea. Challenged by Dewar, done well, stolen away. Now comes Canavan, now he's bursting forward. Coming after him is Declan O'Sullivan. Canavan, straight at the goalkeeper, easy one there. Or rather, it's Kavanagh, taken by Murphy. And Moynihan getting the ball away. Out to Paul Galvin. Holding it up there, challenged by McGuigan. Reinforcements arrive. Oh, Mike McCarthy in two minds almost. Stephen O'Neill there, making life difficult for him. Kerry do well. They get it out once again to Seamus Moynihan. Again, the swarm challenging from the Tyrone team, but it's broken this time. This time it's O'Sullivan coming forward with Tomas O'Shea. Letting it fly into the two-man inside forward line, and McMenamin did well that time against Gooch. And they get the ball away, down as far as Davy Hart. This time there's a bit of looseness by Kerry. McGuigan with a chance to pick out a man. Stephen O'Neill was his target. Didn't take it. Darrow O'Shea takes command of the situation. Kerry with a lot of players back. That's a bad ball out. Straight to Jordan. They give the ball away poorly that time. McGuigan, good ball because he was surrounded by three or four Kerry players. Tough getting through there. O'Neill. If there are three or four players go for the one ball, there must be a man loose somewhere. McGuigan, awkward angle, impossible angle, but a brilliant score. Incredible score, Joe, uh, Jared, that time. And again, credit Stephen O'Neill. He was out in his ear, but so uh, had the vision to see McGuigan loose, who seemed again just to be totally out of it and out of position, but a fantastic score. That was an amazing score. Out of the corner, forced out to the edges. He still swung it between the posts. For all their great defensive work, Kerry breached that time, and there's only a point between the teams. Great resistance by Tyrone, and they win a free. Ryan Mellon, fouled, free to be taken by Brian Duher. Rapidly down, taken up here, however, by Mike McCarthy. Mark O'Shea next. William Kirby available, the challenge by Stephen O'Neill. Kerry trying to look composed here as they take it out of their half-back line with O'Mahony. Three Tyrone players going, and a fourth one there as well. Back there is McGuigan. Tyrone have fought their way back into this contest. Mulligan, to her. 
taking on the champions. It's an ambitious kick, it's a huge one, and it's a... Uh, where is it? Yes, they finally wave a white flag. Delight for the Tyrone fans. What an ambitious kick by Brian Duher. He is capable of the spectacular shot like that. He's done it many times in the past. They wish he'd do it even more. The teams are level. What leadership by Duher that time. Nobody inside him to give the ball to. Took the responsibility. Fired over an absolutely inspirational point. And again, for all Kerry's dominance in the first 26 minutes, Tyrone are eating into that lead and have drawn level with them. Now it's going to be some tussle. Once again, it's Darrow Shea looking up, looking for Cooper, trying to let it inside. McMenamin sticking to the task, little push was there. Referee says play on, it's McMenamin who has it. McMenamin once again. Terrier defensive work there. Back it comes as far as Gormley, under pressure. Good composure, nicely out as far as Philip Jordan. The champions of 2003 have drawn level with the champions of 2004. Canavan setting it up, the race through with Jordan, stopped really well by Declan O'Sullivan, spills out again into the middle, Davy Hart's in there, referee blows the whistle, free to Tyrone on the 45 metre line, just heats up a little bit. Yeah, again, I think William Kirby got involved that time with Peter Canavan, and again, it's all heating up now. No particular need for it. The uh, linesman on the far side, who is uh, Garoy de Canova, from Galway coming in to have a word with the referee meanwhile Tom O'Sullivan and Peter Canavan yeah, he won't and let it go to Jersey yeah, and it's all getting very very silly at the moment they'd be far better off now just to walk away from this stay in the match do what they do best play football but there's an awful lot of tension and there's a Tyrone player down injured yeah Brian, uh, Brian McGuigan I think is down injured took a very very heavy belt that time I think from William Kirby and again, the referee may have words with William Kirby. I think he's checking with Jerry Kenevy over there at the moment. Here's what happened again here now. Oof. William Kirby was stepping in that time, and the referee may well have some words with him. Well, to be fair, all William Kirby was doing was putting his hands up that time to defend himself as uh, Brian McGuigan came in on him. But that's the belt, I think, that Kirby hit on, on Canavan that started all the rumpus. Well, the referee, meanwhile, as we're watching the reprise of all of that with Peter Canavan with his gun shield there, and the referee is talking with uh, it's a yellow card for Tom O'Sullivan. That's the end product. Brian McGuigan is still down injured. You know, in the build-up to this, Martin, people were talking about the enormous tension that we were going to experience here and how the players were going to cope with it. Amateur players, um, they're reading about it, they're hearing about it, That's right. they're working their jobs each day, and uh, how do you keep your feet on the ground with everybody telling you what's going to happen and what you should be doing? Well, I thought the tension had dissipated quite early on, Ger, but in the last couple of minutes it's got quite explosive on a couple of occasions, and again, the referee has, you know, he's done very well up to now, and he's been very, had a calm presence out there, but again, some of the tackles are beginning to just go, you know, beyond what's acceptable. Here comes Aidan O'Mahony trying to take it out of that group of players, but Tyrone once again work it well. They've recovered from the body blow of the goal after six minutes. They fought their way back into the game. They're showing good commitment, good coolness under pressure, good creative ideas as well. McGuigan, excellent. Kavanaugh has come into the match in a big way. Back towards Canavan. Again, playing cat and mouse with uh, Kerry. Laid off as far as Stephen O'Neill, looking for an opening. Kavanagh again, Ooh, that's back. But Duher anticipating. So they recycle, he tries to go through Moynihan that time, and Moynihan takes him down, and Moynihan's already on a ticking. So this could be a yellow card for Seamus Moynihan. Referee's going across, having words with him, I think it is going to be. Yeah, you can see the frustration in the Kerry players. There are 12 of them back in their own half at the moment, trying to counteract the actual uh, the, the tactics that uh, Tyrone are employing. And again, Seamus that time came in very, very hard and has got a yellow card for his, for his troubles. So now we've had uh, three yellow, uh, four yellow cards in the match, three for Kerry, one for Tyrone. There it is again, high challenge. Then there was nothing dirty or, you know, or untoward about that, but it's just maybe it, it was high, Ger, all right. Stephen O'Neill kicking. Stephen O'Neill putting it over the bar, and that's the lead for Tyrone for the first time. From the free, from Stephen O'Neill. They're happy. 
So now, Kerry, who haven't scored since the 16th minute, I think it is. Bit of work for them to do. All that great approach work, all the lovely, fancy football earlier, early on. Tyrone have settled into the task. Shown they're not going to be tossed around in this game. Forcing Kerry back towards their own half-back line. Here's Moynihan, who now has to be careful on a yellow card. The last challenge may not have been a particularly nasty one, but any more like that, it'll get another one. Or to be a, a red at that stage. Here's Cooper, beautifully inside. Then he has to go back, make an angle, he can do so. What a player, what a score. A second for Colin Cooper. And remember, he had a lion's share in the build-up to the goal as well. That's two shots at the target by Gooch and two points for Colm Cooper. Just watch how he let the ball beat him, taken inside McMenamin. Now watch the step back. There you go. Not much of an angle here. There is now. Beautiful. Oh, well, it's a contest between the Wasp and the Imp. That time was so impish, the way he put that over at the bar. You know, you have that Waspish presence all the time breathing down his neck, the sting of every opportunity. Great score, though. And the teams are level. Third time they've been level in this match. Out it comes again to Mark O'Shea. It's quite a tussle. Joe McMahon being dragged out of position. Letting it into Colm Cooper, letting it run on. Ryan McMenamin doing his task well, as well as anybody can do against Cooper. It reaches Sean Kavanagh. Oh, Dewar was letting it run on if it would, but it didn't quite do so. Good persistence by Kerry and Darrow Canada back once again to uh, Colm Cooper. And this time he's put the ball wide. Again, the tackling that time of Derek and Age is not something people normally associate him with, but it's something that we notice with the new Kerry team. From 1 to 15, every one of them put in their effort out the field. Great effort, great pragmatism to back up the style that they have. Well, that's uh, a fourth wide now by Kerry in this first half. A couple of minutes to go to half time. Jack O'Connor up and down the sideline here. Normally a very, very calm person, just like uh, the man on the other side. Mickey Hart, who's uh, was in charge this afternoon for the 25th time in the championship. Jack O'Connor, of course, his record, 12 matches played this year and last, between the two years, unbeaten in the championship. But this is the big one. Darrow Shea letting it fly all the way in, and there was no way that Cooper, even if he took the growing tablets, could possibly rise up for that one. And he looks in towards Darrow Shea, as if to say, give me a chance. So one minute of the opening 35 still to play and the referee tells the fourth official how much of added time there will be. Possibly another two minutes with the injuries. It's been a very feisty half, Chair. A lot of very good football from both sides. Hard tackling as you can expect from an All-Ireland final. But some of the scoring has been a delight. But what we have is a blistering contest. It's what we'd hoped for. What a battle in midfield, and again, Kerry from the kickouts doing well. And that was from the Tyrone kickout. They work it back to Declan O'Sullivan, trying to go forward. Three minutes of added time will be played. Seamus Moynihan joining the attack, clipped to the head. That oh, he took too many steps with it. Yeah, it's not like uh, it's not like Seamus to run into traffic like that. Actually, At that time just did take a couple of steps too many. Here's Brian McGuigan. Very thoughtful, incisive kind of centre-forward. Holding it up, waiting for the runners to make some decent moves. That's a very good piece of defending by Tom O'Sullivan. Judge the bounce beautifully. Liam Hassett setting up O'Mahony. Comes back to Darrow O'Shea, to his brother Mark. Plenty of support players. O'Sullivan. Here comes William Kirby again. Kerry looking for another score late in this half. Again, the long ball in towards Cooper. And this time, the referee decides he's doing the dragging on McMenamin. Very often in the past, it's the cornerbacks who get pulled up for that. But the referees have spotted it, I think, during this year and many other years. It's an old ploy. Here comes Philip Jordan. Great ball in towards Mulligan. Catches it well. Inside laid off to Callaghan. Great goal! Peter Callaghan! stoppage time at the end of the first half oh, what a beauty Jared. the combination the interchange the finish top drawer just watch the handling the timing of the run and the precision of the finish that is top quality 
It was Mulligan who took it down ahead of Paul Galvin, isolated as a full back on this occasion. Watch for Canavan coming in, and that's his ninth ever goal in Championship football. And it's Toronto lead by 1-7 to 1-4. How the game has turned around quickly. Cabana now dishing it off once again towards McGuigan, looking for a late point, appreciating that every chance must be taken, and he's taken this one. McGuigan has got a second point. It's turned around brilliantly for Tyrone. The challengers against last year's champions lead by four. That's wonder, a wonderful finish, but again, going back to the goal, Ger, just watch the actual, the, the way he pebble skipped the ball into the net, just dribbled along the ground, precision at its best. Some brilliant football, some great memories from this first half. Tomas O'Shea, Kerry now realising they've got to fight right to the end to win this one, if they're to win it. Here's Darrow O'Shea, what a response, high and over the bar. Great movement by Darrow O'Shea. Emphatic, needed, and such a handsome point from a fabulous player who's played very well along with Kirby in the middle of the field. We're watching a great final. Watch this again. Taking it on the run, beautifully over the bar. Some terrific scoring. And that's a first for the afternoon for Dara O'Shea from Anguilta, gritting his teeth in the centre of the field. And the fans now realising they're watching quite a contest. We're in the three minutes of added time, remember. So if maybe a second or two remaining. Tyrone have it again in the centre of the field. Davy Hart to Jordan. Philip Jordan advancing. Sean Kavanagh holding it up here. Three points the margin. Played out here to Ryan Mellon, who got the first two for Tyrone. Dropped short this time. Dermot Murphy challenged, and the referee blows his whistle at the end of a terrific first half. The crowd rising all around Croke Park, and Peter Canavan coming there in the 36th minute of the first half, in stoppage time, after Gooch Cooper had starred at the other end and set up a goal for Darrow Kineda in the sixth minute. Mickey Hart will be pleased. Every one of his forward line has scored in that first half, and some of the Kerry fans will be wondering, is this the day when we've uh, put our title on the line maybe once too often? Kerry have it all to do. They have a real battle to win down there against Tyrone, and just three points, is it, between them at half-time. It's Tyrone 1-8, Kerry 1-5. Let's go down for some comment immediately now to Marty Morrissey. Marty. Thank you very much, Chair. A most uh, enjoyable first half. You dominated the first 15 minutes, Chair, but Tyrone have come back into it. Yeah, I, I, Tyrone are playing extremely well. Like they, they, they have figured, Kerry figured out. Uh, they're stopping us from getting the ball in fast. Uh, they're attacking us around the middle of the field and the half back line, and they're they're pressurising us in that area. And they're not they're not allowing us get the ball in fast. Whereas on the other hand, they are able to come up the ball, come up the field at pace, and they're putting us under pressure. They're isolating their forwards, and they're able to get the scores. And they deserve to be those few points up at half time. That goal was crucial, though a psychological moment for both Kerry and Tyrone. Yeah, well, you know, Tyrone always hit you when you least expect it, and they're always great. You know, with a couple of minutes to go before half half-time or at the end of the game. But it's all to play for yet. Our guys are not going to give in and it'll be some second half. We look forward to Jers. Thank you very much for joining us. Father Jer McAleer, you started poorly, uh, conversely to Kerry, but you've certainly finished with a bang. Well, we started very, very poorly, but I think we weathered the storm. And I suppose the statistics speak for themselves now. To be nine scores, we have nine scores against Kerry, six scores. At one stage, it wasn't looking that we would even get anywhere near Kerry, but all credit to our boys. We did stick into it. We lost a number of personal battles, but a number of them are coming back into the game. And I think at this stage, well, we're three points ahead. It's still all to play for. Are you confident you can win this All-Ireland? Well, we're conf of course we're confident, yes, but it's, we're going to have to work extremely hard, much harder than we did in the first half, even if we are ahead. Thank you, thank you very much, Father Gerard McAleer. Back to you, Michael. It's going to be some second half, so Gerald Keefe, he's right about that. So that's where we stand at the moment in this All-Ireland Football Decider. After the commercial break, I'll be talking to Joe Brawley and Colin O'Rourke. They're still here with me in studio, of course. First half analysis right after these.
It's half time in the 2005 All Ireland Football final between Kerry and Tyrone. Tyrone leading Kerry, one goal, eight points to one goal and five points. Colin Moore, Joe Brawley here with me. Joe, the stuff we put in the rally cars, it's called Turbo Max. It's a special fuel to make it go harder. I think those lads down there have had a few cups of it. It's the highest possible standard. And you know, I mean, Kerry have been doing it in the training field and they've been working for this game, but nothing can pre prepare you for the way Tyrone play. And Tyrone have been through those three hard games against Armagh. And you can just see they're so bloody minded, they're so well organised, and they're so dynamic. You know, and they, tactically, I think that Kerry are in a bit of a bind now because Gormley's sweeping in front of Cooper. Sullivan has gone out the field and he isn't really contributing out there. It's, the tackling's too intensive out there. He's not able to get on the ball. And the most important thing is that Gormley's able to play in front of Cooper. I mean, Canavan's playing out around the middle and he's laying off and he's, he's, he's playing as a link yeah, man. And yeah. then he's running late, as you saw, for the goal. And Thrown a rampage and through the middle a great pace to break down the Kerry blanket defensive system and boys like Ryan Mellon are just showing you know someone like Tomas O'Shea who's one of the best players in the country showing him no respect whatsoever. This is the full-on Tyrone experience that Kerry are getting now. Which is already on the game and for a lot of lot of the game it has to be said, Colin Moore, like Kerry were playing that lovely kind of football. They were breaking through the Tyrone defence yeah. in the same way. We some great points. I mean, their first two yeah. points from uh, the Gucci and Brosnan were oh. just classic stuff. Yeah, but Kerry then went to sleep after 15 minutes of almost total dominance. And you, sit, you think at the beginning, you know, he has no right to shoot from there, goes on to his wrong all. foot and kicks it over the bar. Only a magician can do things like that. And then sweeping move upfield, which Kerry are very good at. Good foot passing from Darrow O'Shea, who's given away a good few balls that he had in his hands. And then Brosnan, who to put into full forward. Again, you would think not the most accurate player not in the world. At all. Swings his foot and puts it over. Like, <laughs> they were the first two scores of the game. I mean, that'll yeah. frighten the life out of anybody. But yeah. they went quiet. But, you know, if the Gooch gets any smell at all, he's in. Oh, yeah. I mean, he is he is like the, the, really the perfect forward. You know, I mean, well, I mean, the bomber listen was the perfect forward. But, you know, there aren't many of those around. Cooper is the perfect forward. And he will score if he gets the ball. And he'll never lose heart. And he'll keep his patience. And he's absolutely deadly. Yeah. But, but Tyrone are able to limit him. And McMenamin's his game as a pheasant. He's doing very well on him, as well as anybody would. But the important thing is that Gormley and Duhur, etc., are getting back in front and making it difficult so that if Cooper is going to get a chance, it's going to be out towards the corner, Kerry, out towards the side. Kerry, oh, when Kerry got the goal, I mean, you would say to yourself, yeah. they really are in control of the match now. That's right, yeah. but at that stage, Sullivan was playing more up front. Yeah. He needs to come back up more to help his forwards because, you know, they have no outlet for ball yeah. except kicking it long, and it's just not working yeah. at the moment. It was for a yeah. while, you would say, that you know, when this ball came in, again, you know, Cooper is the man that sets it up. Great McGee gets caught ball watching and Kinead that oh, does yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. But uh, McGee, I think you see yeah. number four, watching the man instead of watching the ball and McConnell a bit slow to come out, but Kinead that does excellently. But then after that, Kerry went to sleep then for 15 minutes. I, I, I disagree, minutes. Colin. I don't Tyrone think they went to sleep. Strangled well, them around no, the middle uh, of the field completely. Yeah, but also well, Colin, and I think Joe's going no, to make the point, you no. know, Tyrone are slow to get into game, but when yeah, they yeah. do, and when they do hit their stride, yeah. it's, it's impressive stuff. Well, I disagree with Colin. I don't think Kerry went to sleep at all. You know, I think Kerry came out and executed the game plan that they wanted to execute in the first 15 minutes. But, you know, that again, a heart back the point, it's coming off the training field. Tyrone are coming into this game from three battles with Armagh and it's automatic pilot almost you know this is how you do it and this is how we go about it the mental strength and the resolve the boost to their confidence at having come through those games Kerry on the other hand you know haven't been used to burning teams off easily you know we Kerry are in a huge battle now and the most important thing from Kerry's point of view is whether or not they have the mental strength to stand up to Toronto because otherwise we talked before the match about the importance of Owen Mulligan. We wondered what kind of start the game. The goal came from the two of these lads, of course. That's right, but an unusual situation developed here. You know, it was no free there, I think. You know, Gooch and McMenamin sort of shoving at each other. The free goes to uh, Tyrone and straight away the attack. And they have got increasingly good. But if you look at this situation here, Mulligan, brilliant catch and... Canavan's there, slides it under the goalie because he's a brilliant goalie. But if you look at this, Paul Galvin is isolated on Owen Mulligan. You know, where was Mick McCarthy? A terrible mistake for the Kerry defence mistake. But you can see Canavan shouting, give it to me, give it to me. And as soon as he does, holds it up just oh, it, very also, few people would put it in there. And he, very also, few. he also holds up the man. I mean, Mulligan did everything perfectly there. The reason that Mulligan was on Galvin is because Tyrone pull you all over the pitch. There's no such thing as conventional positionings, you know. OK, gentlemen, we have a break to take here on the programme again. John is after that, the conclusion of the story of the 2005 Football Championship.
Back again to Croke Park, half-time in this year's football final. Tyrone leading Kerry, one goal and eight points to one goal and five points. 82,112 people are enjoying this game, and we are amongst those, obviously. We're still buzzing about that goal of Peter <laughs> Cannabis, still discussing it. You know, I think it's a great goal. As, as connoisseurs of goals, not necessarily that we scored that many, but as connoisseurs <laughs> of goals, it really was a thing of beauty. I mean... The, th this is one thing that has really flummoxed Kerry. You know, this work rate of Toronto all over the field, like, and they just go for everything. They're like automatons. Great ball in. Brilliant catch by Mulligan, who's about 14 stone and a joiner by three, so he's no trouble. Holds it up beautifully. Now, if you watch the goal, mm. he gave it exactly at the right second. You know, so the Kerry player was there. He was sort of blocking the goalkeeper. Yeah. Canavan's finish was beautiful, as you would expect from Peter Canavan. But watch Mulligan holding it up to just the right second. Paul you know, Gallagher from trying to mark him. He didn't yes. give it a second too early, you know. And Probably of course, Peter knows all about sticking like the middle. Mulligan would normally it. turn and shoot himself, but uh, the only person in the world probably that he'd pass it to was Peter. He took a glance at Calvin's face. And and he's, and he's, a, he's a good, unselfish player, Mulligan. Uh, he uh, gave yeah, the ball. Yeah. And Dermot yeah. Murphy's a very big goalkeeper. And big goalkeepers, everybody always tells you, keep the ball on the ground, you know. And it wasn't even a hard shot, but it was the one place that Murphy was going to have difficulty with. Yeah, Brian Joe scored a point that was also very important in the first half. I mean, he's the captain of this team. Yeah. And, you know, when Tyrone were, were struggling to, to, to sort of get into the game, he came up and yeah. he scored one of those. Yeah, Hard. yeah, that kind of job. passion, you know, and with all the other things that they've got going for them, you know. I mean, Kerry would be, wouldn't be human if they weren't going in at halftime. I'm just a bit rattled. I know they have a great pedigree and I know the game isn't over, you know, and oh, Kerry sure. could certainly come back. But, you need but they're bound like to be to... going in a bit shocked, mm. you know. Mm. And... You know, do her such an important figure for the team. And, you know, already, I'm, I have no doubt that Kerry will be saying, like, does this guy do this for the whole match? Yes. I mean, he's been in the full back line the, and then oh, in the yeah. full forward line. Yeah. Full back, full forward, yeah. full back, full forward. Yeah. And he'd rather die than not succeed. The difference so, so, you know, the last 10 years. Kerry are going to have to mm. match that. That is the first and important thing that Kerry are going to have to do. Now, it's not good enough to come out for 15 minutes. Like our man, Tyrone, what you saw was the game wasn't won until the last couple of minutes. And you've got to stick in there. And you've well, got Kerry, to show your manliness. Kerry you know? have been a bit one dimensional. You know, they're getting the ball and they're kicking it long in and hoping that Gooch will get his hands on it. If he does, there's big, big problems. He scored a couple, he set up yeah. a goal. But with Garmley now drifting back and covering in front of the Tyrone full back line, that option has been cut out. So Kerry need to push up a forward. And Declan O'Sullivan has been caught in the middle of the field mm. yeah. and hasn't contributed that That's much. Right. So they need to push him up more into a, a central role in attack. Otherwise, they're not going to have this outlet with the long ball. Tyrone are much more patient. They're spreading it wide and they're playing it over and back across the field before they then get this runner coming through at yeah. pace. I know the two of you believe that, you know, it's with Tyrone now that they are beginning to take control of the game. I have one salient question for you. Any plans for the 9th of October? <laughs> well, I think Tyrone are asking, the they're asking all the hard questions of Kerry. Yeah. Now, if this is a great Kerry team and a brilliant Kerry team, which they've showed on different occasions in the past, Kerry will respond to this challenge. So Tyrone have really put it up to Kerry. It's going to be a, an interesting second half. You were talking, Colin Bork, about the fact you would had a chat uh, with Peter Canavan there about uh, a few days ago, and he said if he started the game, he wouldn't finish it. Now, if they lose Peter Canavan out of this game, yeah, but he's contributed a lot already. You know, yes. they put them in, a, in, a, in the really in the driving seat at this stage. Cleverly. You know, so he could go off now for 15 minutes and come back on. Kind of the last come 10. back out. By the way, I gather, as you can see, they're lining up for the start of the second half. Let's go back to Martin and Jer. Well, it's uh, Colin Holmes who's coming into the midfield. Peter Canavan is being withdrawn. This is a tactic which I think they are probably going to employ, and I'm sure Mickey Hart has it in his mind to remember that you can use five substitutes, and he can come back in later on. Let's see what happens. There were 15 scores in that first half, and only two of the scores came from placed balls. I'm sure one man who is uh, wondering whether this is going to be the perfect weekend or not is Ty Kennelly watching in Australia. He had a great day yesterday. Second half gets underway, and so now it is Tyrone who are playing into the goal on the right, which is the canal end. Straight away, they're under pressure. And coping well back there was uh, Joe McMahon. Ball run away from him and from everybody else. He's injured. Well, the announcement now being made that Peter Canavan has been taken off the Tyrone team as a tactical substitution. Let's look at this again here. McMahon wrestling and being wrestled by Owen Brosnan. Ran away from the ball. And he just collected, I think, with a trailing boot. 
of uh, Owen Brosnan, but I'm sure Canavan will be back on. I'd say, I think it would, when they beat Armagh, I think in 2003, didn't that happen, Gerard? Yeah, they, I, th I, that I was exactly the, it. Yeah, they kept Canavan in the dressing room, I think, at half time and kept just rubbing up because he had a very bad ankle at the time. And then they actually introduced him when they needed him late in the game again. And I can see the same thing happening today. There he is in the stand at the moment, but I feel myself that he will be back in at some stage. Well, Colin Holmes, his replacement, is a very experienced player. It's his 25th championship appearance for Tyrone. So lots and lots of experience there. Let's see how it all pans out for this second half. Broken into the centre, Holmes into challenge Galvin immediately as Kerry raid towards the Tyrone goal for the second time. This time it's Mac Meneman who wins it out as far as Davy Hart. Played ahead here towards uh, Gormley. Challenged by a couple of Kerry players, Do, does well, shows good assurance. Once again, Mac Menemum taking it out to this wing. Philip Jordan coming through the centre. Brian Duher. Quick little change of direction, being confronted by Mark O'Shea. In to side towards Stephen O'Neill, but once again repulsed by the Kerry half-backs. And Moynihan sets it off once again to Declan O'Sullivan, still playing that very, very deep role, almost as a third midfielder. Galvin, beautifully inside. Cooper, almost effortlessly, beautifully struck by Cooper. Lovely rhythm and fluency, and that is his third point. The opening point of the second half now means there's just two between them. I think that time Cooper tricked uh, McManaman and just came short. Uh, I think the uh, thrown defence were expecting the ball long, which had come in the first two attacks, but drifted off his marker very well, took the point ex ex exceptionally well. I was mentioning Australia earlier on. There's a lady called Elaine Barry from Tralee watching it down there. I know she's going to be very happy after that point. There's McConnell's kick to the centre. Darrow Shea breaking it once again, but it's taken by Ryan Mellon this time, supported by Sean Kavanagh. This is what we expect from Kavanagh. Darrow Shea's after him. Kavanagh confronted there by Moynihan. Breaks loose to McGuigan. Again, the reinforcements are coming. It's Brian Doher high up into the air. Well, that wasn't the best of finishes, but he did score a beauty in the opening 35 minutes. Yep. Such a good kick that time. Yeah, but there's, it's their ability to be patient in pressurised situations that's so impressive, and their ability to find the outlet pass when others would panic, and I think that distinguishes Tyrone maybe from Kerry today. This kick out this time by Dermot Murphy is picked up by Philip Jordan of Tyrone, so they do well on Kerry's kick out on this occasion. Now, can they turn it into a scoring opportunity? Ryan Mellon forced out to the periphery once more. Jordan coming inside, look at the number of Kerry players around him. Still there's composure, it's McGinley this time, beyond Owen Mulligan, and Kerry have a chance to get it back and do so well with Declan O'Sullivan. Looking assured and able as ever. Moynihan running into trouble, but again, Darrow Shea coming to his assistance, two of the more experienced players. Five of this Kerry team are 30 or over, and that's Galvin with a high one to the face, and he could be in trouble with the referee for that. Fans getting back onto their feet again, and Galvin is called aside following that high challenge there in the intensity of the battle, and he's got a, a yellow card. Philip Jordan, I think, was the player that he was colliding with. Yeah, again, went in hard that time, caught him high, but again, a lot of turnovers, a lot of sloppy play in that, play, in, in that li little bout of play. Again, took him very high, and again, deserved to get a yellow card for a tackle like that. That is a, a high one indeed. Challenge came in rather recklessly there from Galvin. Stephen O'Neill then with one converted free so far. This from outside the 45 metre line. Comes off the post down to Mulligan. Again, the backs were all around him, did well and had the presence of mind to fist it over the bar. And it's a third point for Owen Mulligan. Man who was central to the creation of the goal, scored by Peter Canavan in the first half. This was taken beautifully, but look at the number of Kerry backs swarming all around him. It's 1-9 for Tyrone, 1-6 for Kerry. He had great presence of mind, as you say, Jared, to score a point like that under severe pressure. Colin Holmes fisting it, it's taken by Galvin here. On a yellow card, one of four Kerry players yellow carded. Here's another, Seamus Moynihan. 
laid off towards Hassett. Great anticipation, however. The back's doing really well, Philip Jordan, that time. But just keeping Kerry at bay momentarily. Brosnan back towards a better place player. Dara O'Shea nicely, incisively inside for Cooper. Beautifully off for Brosnan. Little turn around. The challenge for Gormley and the foot block coming in from behind from Joe McMahon. And it's going to be a free in. And it was perilously close to the large rectangle from Tyrone's point of view. Yeah, lovely little bit of interplay that time between uh, uh, Gooch and between Brosnan. Again, taken out of it just as he's about to pull the trigger. But again, I suppose there'll be a point, a definite point out of this. But it's certainly a goal was on in that case. Two yellow cards for Tyrone players now. Joe McMahon, the latest. Well, this just outside the 13-metre line. Dara Okineda has now got a goal and a point, and that is Kerry's first score in this match from a place ball from a free. It's that kind of game, lots of flow, lots of fluency. This is Brosnan again, going around the first man who was Gormley and then taken down by McMahon. Yeah, he was taken down from behind here. There was the slap, first of all, and again, OK, to be fair, Brosnan probably kicked across him. I don't think there was any intentional foul on the part of McMahon that time. He took quite a kick in the back of the calf, actually. Well, they are watching right now as there's attention to the uh, stricken Tyrone player, who is the fullback Joe McMahon. McMahon playing in his 15th championship match, a player who's always very dependable in a crisis and has now got the experience of playing fullback in a game and a half. Mike Frank Russell is being prepared down along the sideline and he could be the man to come in now and turn the game Kerry's way. They're two points behind, and we've played seven and a half minutes of the second half here at Croke Park in front of an attendance of over 82,000. So down into the action where it's all happening on this beautiful ground. The end of a long championship, five months long. Do her leaving it there. Beautiful catch, great call by Ryan Mellon. Do her available to pick up the scraps. Sean Cavanagh holding up the point of the attack, going for it himself. This is curling slightly to the right, but will it get sufficiently in? No, it won't. Yeah, I think his in inside forwards that time were a little bit disappointed that the ball wasn't put in the front of the boat. End of McGinley and Mulligan were quite well placed that time to kick the ball if it was uh, delivered to them. So Mike Frank comes on as a replacement for Liam Hassett. It's uh, Mike Frank's 46th championship uh, appearance. 27-year-old teacher, of course, and a man with a great scoring record. Well, now, even in Tyrone during the week, they were saying to me, supposing we're doing well in this match, what happens when Mike Frank comes on the scene? What a sub to be able to bring in as Tyrone have a free. And there's a, a ticking for William Kirby for his part in that foul. Yeah, there's a boy actually be very pleased with his game today is Ryan Mellon. Again, that's the second period. Beautiful fielding he's executed during the game. Fouled from behind by William Kirby. But the two points he got early on, as well as some of the fielding and his work rate, have been instrumental in actually keeping Tyrone ahead of Kerry. Well, he likes playing against Kerry. In the league, he got two goals down in Killarney. Admittedly, one of them came from a penalty. Mickey Hart then, who has won 16 of the 24 championship matches in which he has been responsible for, Kerry, for uh, Tyrone's fortune so far that's a probing ball in Dermot Murphy Kerry don't concede too many goals but Murphy beaten once this afternoon and they are trailing by two points in this final as once again they come forward with Aidan O'Mahony from Rathmore for William Kirby oh he's left it behind him good strong play by Colin Holmes that time it comes to Stephen O'Neill now Sean Kavanagh, they're trying to exploit gaps. They're trying to exploit a, maybe a fresher, more youthful approach as they take on the champions from last year. Bottled up initially, comes back once again. My goodness, is it intricate. What will it finish? It finishes with a most brilliant score by Stephen O'Neill. They were playing ducks and drakes with the Kerry backs that time, and Kerry had no answer for the old 1-2. A 1-2 finished by O'Neill. Absolutely majestic. Just watch the calmness under pressure. The little 1-2 bamboozled the Kerry defence. And again, O'Neill strike with the right foot from a difficult angle. Top class. Just watch again the turnover here. Again, great tackling back by Collie Holmes. 
And Kerry have a free in the centre of the field following all of that. Well, now have Kerry, the champions of last year, got it within themselves still after 10, nearly 11 minutes of the second half to come back and to win this final and to lift the Sam Maguire, win the title for the 34th time. Tyrone going for just their second. Well, certainly they're dictating the tempo and the trend of the game at the moment and the way the game's been played. They're just outthinking Kerry. That's a beautiful ball again. Measured pass to O'Neill. Beautiful lay off to Mulligan. Quick look up. All those matches that they've played. Great block by Seamus Moynihan. Spills down. Moynihan trying to get in again. So too is Stephen O'Neill. And uh, the referee will, I'm sure, throw the ball up after all of that to end the uncertainty. Yeah, you sometimes think, actually, Jared, that Tyrone become too intricate and too, you know, over-elaborate in what they're doing. If they were a little bit simpler, I think they'd get a, be a, be a better dividend. Interesting and exciting match. Opening quarter belonged to Kerry. They were stylish, playing with flair, getting the scores, getting a goal. And then Tyrone settled to the task. But Kerry trail by three, and it's Tomal Soche setting an angular ball in there inside towards Cooper and it's won again by Ryan McMenamin from Dromore great ball ahead and there's nobody picking up Sean Cavada. now maybe the legs are going from the two midfielders for Kerry can they stay the pace with Sean Cavada and company there's a long way to go Cavada kicking off the post and it comes safely back down to Tomas O'Shea that was a let off. Yeah, and a lot of Kerry players, as you rightly have identified, Jar, are beginning to wilt out around the middle. I think they need, need fresh legs and lead them very quickly does it, to, if they're actually to get back into the game and sustain this barrage of Tyrone pressure at the moment. And Kerry hold on to the ball too long. Declan O'Sullivan is penalised. It's going to be a free to Tyrone. It's Tyrone's tenth match of the championship against Kerry's sixth. And Chris Lawn is coming in for Joe McMahon, who was injured a little while ago. It's his 34th championship match, fitting he should come in, because he played in uh, eight of the opening nine games. Great campaigner, Chris Lawn. He'll give everything he has to the cause, you can be certain of that. So Joe McMahon makes his way off, and it's Tyrone who have possession. Once again, McGuigan holding it up here. Nice ball inside here for McGinley, who can play just about anywhere. Back it comes once again towards Collie Holmes, laid outside to O'Neill, getting it on the trusty left this time. Beautifully measured. Great score by Stephen O'Neill, and that's a third. The Tyrone fans are having a wonderful afternoon at Croke Park. Their team are leading by 111 to 17. Look at the style of this. He measured it just to the inch inside the right hand post. They're so creative, so inventive, beautifully two footed, and again a wonderful score by O'Neill. And is he to come back in? I think so. Kerry, what is their response? They are rocked by the champions of 2003 who have the ball back again with McGuigan who's fouled free quickly taken to Philip Jordan referee says hold it a while they're just chasing shadows at the moment Jared Kerry cannot keep up with the sustained pace and pressure of the Tyrone team just wonder whether the younger Tyrone team in spite of all the matches they've had all season maybe that was the best thing that ever happened to them it gelled them together brilliantly as a side Here's Duhar again, laid off here towards O'Neill, likes it on the left foot, he's dragged down by Aidan O'Mahony. Again, the other backs come in quickly, invite the uh, Kerry player to hold on to it too long, or force him to do so, and it is a free out for Kerry. Oh, that's a push in the back by Tyrone's Brian McGuigan. Yeah, I thought Tyrone, uh, Stephen O'Neill was a little bit unlucky that time in going through, I thought he might have got a free. McGuigan is ticked there for not uh, getting the ball or getting away from the free quickly enough. Now Mike McCarthy from Kilcommon. Sean Kelly, the up to on common Luke Lars scale, is from that club. And the president must be biting his nails if he does that practice. His team are trailing by four. And Kerry have another free. And Tomal Soche was ticked just moments ago. Ready to take this one. Yeah, the relentless application, actually, Ger of the Tyrone team at the moment is beginning to wear Kerry down. They need scores rapidly if they're to get back into the game. Well, they need this man here, Mike Frank Russell, to explode into life. He's only on the field about four minutes, four or five minutes. They he... Yeah, they definitely have the quality, though, Ger. It's just a case of maybe trying to get a bridge holder on the centre of the field again. They're not getting any ball there, either in first phase or on breaking ball. They need to get that to get themselves back into it. 
Well, as the panel were saying, and you've mentioned, they have been somewhat one-dimensional. Like they all, people have all said, always said, if, if Cooper is held for Jack O'Connor's team, what's going to happen? Cooper is limited to three points, I know, which isn't half bad by Mickey Hart and company. They need Mike Frank Russell, I think, to really get going. But he's a confidence player, needs one score. There's the possession stakes. It's much, much brighter from Tyrone's point of view. And here they come again, lording it over the kingdom. Sean Kavanagh toying with Darrow O'Shea, twisting, wriggling. The push comes in then from Galvin, who's already been yellow carded. And he could be in trouble here. And he's got the notebook. He's uh, very lucky. It's a ticking after the yellow, which the referee is entitled to do. Well, I think this is a real cop-out, to be honest with you, Jared. This I agree. Black, I, very much so. I think it's something the referees, at the end of the season, they're perfectly entitled to do it, but they should review that one. Mulligan kicks it over, he's got a fourth, and Kerry are lucky that they've still got 15 players on the field. Two of Mulligan's points have come from Freeze, but of course he created the goal for Peter Canavan as well. Kerry need players at the moment to stand up and be counted, out around the middle of the field, they need to start applying themselves, get on the ball, and just match Tyrone for application and work rate. Kerry haven't scored for 10 minutes, they went through the first half not scoring at one stage for 16 minutes. This is not like the Kerry champions of last year. But then people have said Kerry didn't really meet a good, strong, physical team yet this side. They are this afternoon, and that side is Tyrone. Brian Dewar hoping that he'll be lifting Sam, but there's still quite a while to go. Bad ball away, comes to Colin Cooper. He'll be up for the fight. Back to Darrow O'Shea. They need to score quickly. Darrow O'Shea plants it beautifully over the bar, and he's got a second... Tyrone can hold the celebrations with the likes of Dara O'Shea around. Young fans, young and old for Kerry, saluting that score, and it's 112 to 18. Yeah, great score from Dara O'Shea, probably his best display, I think, of the championship today, even though he's playing on a team that is under a lot of pressure. Mickey Hart, meanwhile, down on the sideline, is still chatting away to Peter Canavan. They're just discussing the game right now, I'm sure, but they're hatching a plan. What's the right moment to bring Peter back in? Tyrone in a lot of the games too, Jared, have had lapses of concentration where they've allowed teams back at them. Now they need to guard against that for the remainder of the game. And this time it's a, a Tyrone free kick for pushing that time by some of the Kerry midfielders. Do her taking it. One well here by Enda McGinley. Such a game young player. Ryan Mellon. Beautifully back in again here. That time dropping short into the arms of... Murphy that time from Stephen O'Neill. Shades of the Dublin game, Ger. Yeah. And Kerry can counter, but look at the number of Tyrone players, the swarm defensive work. It should leave a couple of players from Kerry loose if they're quick to look up and spot where the gaps are in this huge park. Here's William Kirby, forced to kick it under a little bit of pressure. Now it's into the inside forward, and that's great fielding in there. Wonderful play by Chris Lawn. Never, ever was he going to leave the side down. And it comes out to Philip Jordan. He's restrained and fouled. Free kick rapidly taken. Here comes McGuigan. They're absolutely inspired at the moment, Jared. They're on a real roll. They're running, running, running off the ball. It's causing endless problems for Kerry. Can they maintain it, Tyrone? Can Kerry find a way back? They're trailing by four. And once again, it's Colly Holmes looking for somebody to come and support. That somebody was Kavanagh. Now it's Mulligan. And that time hitting and hoping, but really could have done a lot better with that. And Peter Canavan is now going to come back in as a replacement, this time for Ender McGinley, and listen to the cheer. Yeah, McGinley has been playing in a corner forward for all of the half, so it's a natural enough switch at this stage. There's a quarter of the game still to play, the 2005 Bank of Ireland football final. And it is Toronto who are leading by four points. Well, Kerry will need to build up their scoring opportunities. They've only had three scoring opportunities in the second half so far, which is 20 minutes old against 10 for Tyrone. And here comes Chris Lawn, hoping to launch an 11th inside beautifully as far as O'Neill. What a leader. He's got the physique, he's got the talent, great composure. Inside to Mulligan, taking on McCarthy, looking around quickly. Where's the support? It's from Davy Hart, up from wing back. 
and he kicks, and he kicks it wide. Well, that's a bad miss. They've had two bad misses in the last couple of minutes, Joe, with very promising attacks. They could rue that later on. Indeed, if Kerry can get a goal very quickly, it, you know, anything is possible. And Tyrone will know that. Their fans will have studied the history of this game and they'll know that you measure your success as a team against what you can do against the kingdom. Taken brilliantly in the air by William Kirby. Good catch. Galvin now. Wriggling his way this way and that, needing the support of Tomal Soche. Last year's Footballer of the Year, beautifully dished off by Daryl Kaneda to the raiding O'Shea once again. Can Kerry score here? Under pressure in the corner here. It's Mike Frank Russell, partly blocked, comes to Brosnan. Brosnan blocked that time brilliantly by Gormley, and it's broken in the back of the net. It's Tomal Soche. Silence now among the Tyrone fans. Jubilation for Kerry. What a goal! But a point between them and Tyrone absolutely rocked. Tomas O'Shea has come up to score his third goal ever in Championship Fair. Look at this for a devastating shot. Brilliantly executed after 57 minutes. Well, that's heroic from Tomas O'Shea. He came up twice, three times into that, into that attack, really driving his players on, trying to get them to, to believe in themselves that it is still possible. Wonderful score for Kerry. Kerry have been living on scraps in the second half, but they're only a point behind. Again, they come forward here with the elegant Declan O'Sullivan pursued by Brian McGuigan. Support again from Darrow Kineda. He's playing well. Colm Cooper. Limited ball going into the inside forwards, but they can be so effective. Darrow Shea trying to... Well, trying to equalise it, failing to do so. That's some contest it's we had, Joe. It is an absolute cracker, and great credit, and great credit to Tomas O'Shea, because when so many were having a sporadic involvement in the game, he has driven forward against all the odds. Just watch that again for a finish. Two attempts, fantastic shot right into the top near-hand corner, very difficult to execute. Fully deserved from a very brave player. Just a thought, Martin, it was Gormley who blocked down the initial shot. Remember what he did in the 2003 final against Stevie McDonnell of Armagh? That is for sure, Ger. Had, yep. that, had that stayed out, history would be repeating itself, I think. Meanwhile, it's Declan O'Sullivan as Kerry come looking for scores, and it's Chris Lawn who takes it down. Outside here, as far as Davy Hart, they build again from the back. It's the little flyer with the white boots, Mac Miniman, out here towards a composed Sean Cavada. Looking around, trying to pick the perfect pass. He's picked out Mellon. It's back out towards Mac Menemon again, taking on O'Mahony. Beautiful ball inside. Here's Stephen O'Neill trying to engineer something. A free would do. Outside to Canavan. Oh, it's an impossible angle. Oh, it's an impossible angle, and he's made it. Absolutely brilliant by Peter Canavan. A goal and a point by the man these fans call God. Come at the hour, come at the man. They badly needed that score. And again, you must credit the wee man at the back, the wee wasp himself, Ryan McMenamin, the way he came forward that time. Two or three times in the attack, then fed God, God found heaven. <laughs> it's two points of a margin now between them. And Tyrone will still not feel too relaxed in this because Kerry are still a major, major threat. But it's Tyrone who are coming forward again, relentlessly. Ryan Mellon, quick look up. Dropped in towards Peter Canavan. Woof. Almost collided with the advertising hoarding in his endeavours to try and keep that one in play. It's got to be a kick out to Kerry. I noticed the Eamon Fitzmaurice is warming up at the moment and I think it's a, uh, Declan Quill probably need fresh legs coming into the final furlong at the moment here. Yeah, well, he played against uh, Tyrone also in 2003. We haven't heard an awful lot of him in the championship since then. Can he turn it around? Kerry are wondering. Owen Brosnan now in the centre of the field. Here comes out as far as Moynihan. Back once again towards Mark O'Shea. It'll be Darren O'Sullivan, by the way, rather than Declan Quill, it seems, who's going to come in, if that is going to be the case. Meanwhile, here's Brosnan. He's strong, resilient, trying to cut through here. Powerfully inside, dragged back. He's won a free, 13 metres out. Great work by Owen Brosnan, the solicitor who is from the Dr. Croaks Club in Killarney. And he's got blood on the face, I think, there. And if the referee spots it, 
Or has he? No, maybe not. Well, indeed, both teams deserve great credit. Uh, Tyrone, for the way they have applied themselves, simply shredded the reputation of Kerry. Kerry, for the way they failed to accept the script and came, have come right back into it. And again, the fitness levels, the sheer belief in both sides. Wonderful, wonderful for amateur sportsmen. Cooper's got three so far, and he's now kicked a fourth. Crucial point, critical stage in the game. It means there's just one between them, and Kerry are about to make a change. And Darrow Kinnada, the goal scorer from the first half, is going to be replaced by Darren O'Sullivan. And this is a young player who's coming in, I think, for his championship debut. He was added to the uh, side, added to the panel, round right about the Munster final day, and he was playing in last year's minor final, as far as I can remember. Yeah, some player, I haven't seen him at all at senior level, Ger, but he was a very, very good minor. Again, a great, it's a bit of a gamble maybe by Jack O'Connor, but nobody knows his football better. Well, there's about nine minutes to go. Who's going to win Sam? Sean Kavanagh taking on Tomas O'Shea. It's still Sean, Sean Kavanagh into the corner towards Owen Mulligan. Want to hold it now, Tyrone, and just pick out the best possible shot. Everything is crucial. You don't want to give anything away lightly at this stage. Jordan, again, great movement, but they don't want to turn the ball over. It's Stephen O'Neill forced outside here to Jordan. Again into the corner here towards Peter Canavan. Two Kerry players go to him immediately. Hope he'll overhold. And has Canavan won a free in for that? I think he has. Yeah, lucky enough free in to be fortunate. fair. About it. Very, very fortunate to get that one. Unless somebody hit him a slap on the ground or something, I think it was a very lucky free to get. And again at a crucial period of the game. The referee raised his notebook as well. I'm not quite sure if he ticked anybody off for that foul. Anyway, Peter Canavan has won the free. And they all count. One point between them, Tyrone leading. Stephen O'Neill has kicked three so far. This suits a left-footed kicker, but it still has to be done on the big day, on the big occasion, and O'Neill has responded. Wonderful nerve, wonderful nerve and calmness to take a free of that importance. Terrific football down there by two wonderful teams. Tomas O'Shea winning the free kick. Oof. Declan O'Sullivan responded very quickly to that wayward pass. Here's Dara O'Shea, kicking it in invitingly. A couple of players waiting for it. Mike Frank just taking it away there from the substitute. Darren O'Sullivan, two substitutes indeed. And in the end, it's uh, Michael McGee who's down on the ground. Yeah, again, they went back to basics in the second half. They let the ball in a lot quicker and in higher than they were doing in the first half. And again, that kind of scrap yard around the middle of the field that you talked about at halftime with Bijer, they've managed to get out of that much, much quicker. This runs all the way through, and Tomas O'Shea put under pressure by Stephen O'Neill. He's one of three, taken high. Aidan O'Mahony kicking it. There's seven minutes remaining in this final. And there's a sense of nervous tension around the place because nobody knows what's going to happen. Darren O'Sullivan bursting forward against another substitute, Colly Holmes, and he was dragged back and he's won a free kick. And there's a chance here, but it's a very difficult chance for Kerry to get within a point of Tyrone. Quite clearly a very explosive little fella, that Darren O'Sullivan. But Chris Lawn is very upset, I think, about an incident that happened further back where he felt he should have been given a free. Colly Holmes is ticked for that. And now the pressure falls on the... Young shoulders of Colm Cooper. The gooch. The jeering rings in his ear. It's a high one, it's an accurate one, and there's one between them. The gooch with his fifth point. Kerry fans never giving up hope. Their team refusing to surrender their title. Again, credit Cooper at the moment. Again, under severe pressure at that time to uh, come up with a score like that. And again, hit it so accurately, so confidently. Great credit to the lad. It's as dramatic a final as we have witnessed. And certainly expectancy materialised today, Ger. We've had a cracker. McConnell kicking it out. Now, can they win their own kick out, Tyrone? Davy Hart has won it. Davy Hart carrying it forward. His side, one point ahead. Ryan Mellon holding it up once again, waiting for somebody to come to assist to make the pass that bit easier. Holmes, well, he spotted a player in space. That player was Philip Jordan, and Jordan has done well. 
aided and abetted by Conor Gormley, who was knocking down Owen Brosnan in his endeavours to get possession. And Gormley continues his run from McGuigan's pass. This is important here. Challenged outside the large rectangle. Spills around awkwardly. Mulligan picks it up. Dishes it back there towards McGuigan once again. Now he plants it. He's put it over the bar. That's a third for Brian McGuigan. Well, there was patience, there was coolness, and there was a great deal of know-how where that performance was concerned. And McGuigan was absolutely brilliant. This is the player who came back from Australia, played in the game against Cavan as a substitute. And all along, they had planned, if McGuigan was coming back from Australia, where he spent four or five months, they would bring him back and they'd have him in as part of their team. He's a vital part. The referee right now wants some words. And it's Brian McGuigan himself, who's already being ticked. Again, a huge, huge admiration for Kerry, Joe, the way they have kept clawing the way back into the game, never, never, never dropped the heads. And again, OK, it's a credit to the birthright, to the fact that they're in the 52nd final, but they're fabulous players, each and every one of them. Well, they have the capacity to bounce back. That's a yellow card now, eventually, for McGuigan. For the record, it means there are now three yellow cards for Tyrone, and one, two, three, four for Kerry. What a brilliant contest. Oh, Brosnan was being ambitious, trying to play the ball into space and going in there to take it up as Collie Holmes, but quite a scrap in the centre, and the referee has seen the ball touched on the ground, and it's Tyrone who are much the happier with his verdict. It's a free ball for Tyrone. Yeah, tough call that time. It is a tough call because now there are three minutes left to play. Seamus Boynihan is going off and Eamon Fitzmaurice is coming on. Fitzmaurice, a very, very experienced player, comes on for his first, 41st experience of playing in the championship. And Brian Sheehan is coming on for Paul Galvin, so they're throwing everything they've got at this stage for the last three minutes because Tyrone are leading Kerry in the 2005 final by two points. Yeah, and Tyrone have been absolutely again. Okay, we have credited Kerry for their comeback, but Tyrone's composure, their, their awareness of their own system, the fact that the players are willing to carry out that system that they have perfected over a period of years is a great credit to each and every one of them. Here comes Jordan. McGuigan. Well, anxious now just to hold possession. They don't want to give the ball away, can't afford to give it to Kerry, need to frustrate the kingdom in fact as we watch the substitute there, Fitzmaurice commit the foul and the referee awarding the free to Mickey Hart's team Yeah, they've been smart, they're slowing things down they're getting, you know, they're just kind of wearing Kerry down a little bit, frustrating them as you say, Ger Tyrone are leading by two points, Martin, but the bad news for their followers watching everywhere and anywhere right now, there's going to be four added minutes yeah, well, that's for a Tension mounts Yeah, tension mounts, there's been a lot of stoppages Beautiful ball in once again towards Ryan Mellon. Holds on to it, great handling. Peter Canavan, again, using his experience. McGuigan holding on to it here. Tyrone, 115, 2-10 for Kerry. Philip Jordan, Jordan going through. Jordan hitting it, and Jordan scoring! His first point of the day! What a score by Jordan, the player, and not the model, but he's a model player. An absolute classic. Again, patience, probing, eventually getting the gap, and again, a decisive finish. Wonderful, wonderful play that time by the Tyrone lads. Stephen O'Neill being spoken to. Again, the referee wants to hold up the play. Kerry want to get on with it. They are behind by a goal, by three points. And there's a yellow card for Stephen O'Neill. I know a lot of purists would kind of balk at the suggestion that possession play is actually bad for the game, but again, from a Tyrone point of view, it was so clever that time, so smart, the way they actually orchestrated and engineered the, move, the, the space before they got the score. It's Jack O'Connor's 13th match in charge. Is it to be the one where they finally lose? Are Kerry to relinquish their title? Are Tyrone to win it back, having lost last year? Here once again comes Darren O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan up against Chris Lawn. Kerry now need to get the ball in. We're in the four, or nearly into the four minutes of added time. Kerry will need a score quickly. Tyrone strongly holding on to it, battling there. Michael McGee from Lock McCrory holding on to it for dear life. They want to beat the kingdom. They want to take Sam back up north. 
Here comes Stephen O'Neill. We mentioned at the beginning of the game this could be a defining moment for Kerry, taking on a really strong Ulster team in Tyrone. They wanted to take on, I know, either Tyrone or Armagh. Lot has uh, thrown up Tyrone for them, and right now, how will Tom O'Sullivan and the rest of the Kerry team respond? The kick inside towards Cooper, a difficult one for him. He was fouled, the referee says, by Sean Kavanagh. Cooper's on the ground, it's going to be a free in. Yeah, I think Kavanagh gave away the free that time, definitely, Jaron. And again, okay, what did they do at this stage? We're into the 71st, uh, 71st minute of the game now. Did they go for the point, bring it back to two, or to go and try for the goal? Well, he's got to get a yellow card. He was ticked earlier on. Well, I guess, Martin, if you've got another three minutes, you'll take a point at this stage, just to make sure. Yeah, I think they go for it. Put, put it over the bar, take your chances then with the kick out. It's going to be Mike Frank to kick it. Using the right boot. Under three minutes remaining now. Oh, he's going for it, and it's held inside there. It's securely held once again in there. Great defending, and Tyrone work it out. This is a really composed performance. They've got the look of champions, but will they hang on? They've still got another two minutes and a little more remaining. Two minutes and a few seconds. Yeah, they just, just yeah, if they keep calm at the moment, they're guarding the possession so well, they're moving the ball in, in groups, again, supporting each other exceptionally well. Just keep possession, and they, I, th I think they're home and holes. Such a mature performance by Tyrone. So many skilled performers. Connor Gormley here. Well, he's been one of the terrific players this year for them. This is Marco Shea trying to win it back for Kerry. Kerry have a free. We're in the third minute of the four minutes of added time. He's got a goal already, and Tomas O'Shea comes down looking for something else. Freed outside here. They come forward once again. This time it's with Brian Sheehan. The substitute trying to go through. Spills loose. Straight as far as Michael McGee. And McGee tigerishly holds on. Tension all around the place. This time it's Ryan McMenamin. Still McMenamin. There's still going to be another minute to play after all of this, and Kerry may get the ball back. They do. Tomas O'Shea has it. Sensational All-Ireland final. Inside to Darrow O'Shea. This time, various things are happening off the ball. Let's continue with watching what's happening. Mike Frank Russell into space. Nobody there for it. Colin Cooper was taken out of the action there. As I saw it, the referee's whistle sounds. It's all over. Bam. And Tyrone have won the All-Ireland. Absolutely sensational performance by Tyrone. They've won by three points. They had so many heroes. And after ten matches in the 2005 Championship, they have come and they have beaten the champions of last year. Everybody wants to beat the champions. And Mickey Hart and his backroom team have engineered a most wonderful success. His selector, Father Jared McAleer, but people like Tony Donnelly and Fergal McCann as well, and all the backroom team. And look at the invasion of the pitch by all the thousands and thousands of Tyrone fans in a crowd of 82,112. And Peter the Great, Peter the God, Peter the man who scored the goal in the 26th minute, or the 36th minute, I should say, of the first half. Stoppage time, in other words. And what a goal that was. It's one of the greatest all Ireland chair I've ever seen, and what a display by the Tyrone team. What, yep. uh, they were absolutely wonderful, Troy. Mickey Hart armour played at those fellas against all kinds of ills, all kinds of possibilities, and they delivered, Ger, with style. And to have beaten the Kingdom in an all Ireland final is just simply wonderful for Tyrone. I don't think I've seen a better final. That no. was magnificent. We're privileged, sir. We're privileged to be watching this scene at the moment. It's as great a scene as I think you could see in sport. Such emotion, such passion, but such a wonderful, wonderful game of football. That was brilliant skill. Brilliant skill. Absolutely. The place is awash with fervour at the moment, sir. The Tyrone people, why wouldn't they celebrate? But the way the Tyrone team, to a man, celebrated and played. Let's, let's go down. Let's get some comment after all. Let's go down to Marty. Marty. Thank you very much, sir. Mickey Hart, first of all, to you, congratulations. You've won your second All Ireland. What a day. A wonderful day. It was a long, hard road. Ten games. And people said if you put in that kind of effort, you've got to lift the trophy. 
and uh, who else better to put it up to you than Kerry a wonderful match it could have went either way people talk about the way football's going that's some football out there that's some energy the people every both teams put every last ounce of energy into it the rub of the green the bounce of the ball could have went the other way thank God it went our way today 10 championship matches and technically you got it right taking off Peter Canavan at half time bringing him back on again well Peter Callum's a special player he's 34 years of age 70 minutes of that kind of pace is not I know he just hasn't handled it at the minute but he can certainly handle 50 of it and he did today Describe for me, if you can, the emotion in your heart and soul. Because you said to me there a moment ago, thank God we've won. Ten games, second All-Ireland. What, what a way to do it. It's just, we're answered now. The, the great thing about this is, when Conor McAnallan was made captain of our team, he said that he didn't want to leave it. It's just one All-Ireland. And he hasn't. He was looking down on you today, Mickey Hart. Congratulations to you and all of Tyrone. Stay with us, Mickey, because Jura Keefe wants to say a couple of words. From a Kerry perspective, you gave it everything. Marty, we gave it everything. We were beaten by a better team on the day. Tyrone wanted it. You know, they came up today. They played fantastic football. We were chasing the game from early on. When they got the, the, the goal before halftime, after that, we were always chasing it. We tried everything. We put in all our subs. We just weren't, you know, Tyrone were better than us on our day. And I wish to congr congratulate Tyrone. They did fantastically well all year. Year. They played a lot of tough games and they came out on top and they deserve it. I thought you were back in it after Tommaso Shea's goal. I'm sure you felt the same. Well, we always felt we were in the game until the you know the seven or eight minutes to go. Then we gave we tossed away the ball a couple of times and uh, Tyrone got in got in and picked up breaks and went forward, caught a few crucial scores when we got to win one point and uh, you know they 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 closed out the game at that stage. But look, fair play to Tyrone. Some days we've I've had experiences of this before in '82. There'll always be football games. There'll always be winners. There has to be losers. But I want to congratulate Tyrone for an excellent victory and I wish them. Well, and they're all Ireland. Always great words from you, Ger. Okay, very sporting words. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ger. Thanks, Marty. Thanks indeed to Ger O'Keefe and to Mickey Hart as well. You know, at the beginning of this month, I began to say to myself, OK, it's Kerry versus one of the big two from Ulster, Tyrone or Armagh. After that great semi-final, you're hoping and hoping in your heart it's going to be a great final. It was, and that's the final score. It's Tyrone 116, Kerry 210. You know, you're hoping that it's going to be a great final. You're yeah. hoping after all the pressure, Martin, and the tension and the build-up, that they won't somehow... Uh, failed to deliver on the day but yeah. they came up trumps very much so Ger and the great thing about Tyrone in this game I felt myself that against Armada last day they had played a game too many but great credit to the backroom team great credit to their training methods great credit to their mental strength the way they came up and looked as fresh today as a team that had only played two or three games so it begs the question Ger you know how are teams the most of the teams in the country training at the moment let's copy the Tyrone model no challenge matches training twice a week and sensible, sensible, uh, you know, deployment of your resources. Credit to Mickey Hart, it has been some final and some achievement by him and his players. Wonderful, wonderful game, and we're privileged. Some of the Kerry fans are on their way home and probably starting the inquest. I see a Mayo jersey there as well. They were well and truly beaten in the minor. But Mickey Hart has emerged this afternoon as the man who has once again taken the Sam Maguire Cup back up to the north, back up to those football mad loving fans up there in Ulster. And they are the kings of Ireland once again. The red hand prevailing. Well, our congratulations, obviously, to Ron on a fantastic All Ireland success. Sean Kelly is making the presentation of the cup in the Hogan stand. A Kerry man, but I'm sure he's proud to hand over the cup today to a fantastic football team.
Tyrone won it for the first time in 2003. They win it for the second in 2005. And Brian Dewar lifts the Sam McGuire Cup. Tyrone are worthy champions. What a setting. Absolutely fantastic. It really is the place to be on the fourth Sunday in September and Peter Canavan led them there in 2003 Mickey Hart has inspired them and directed them and these Kerry fans will wonder were their team just a little bit too stale on the occasion maybe too one dimensional they met Tyrone and they were brilliant well, certainly with Colum Cooper being eclipsed by Brian McManaman uh, they hadn't got a plan B Ger. and Karen Shaw Blackham there's on winter it's good to be back, isn't it? Yeah. As Peter said here three years ago, I can't think of a better place to be this day. A lot of people have been was a one-year wonder of a looker. Well, today we have proved our eyes. And we've done it the hard way. There's a lot of people I to thank for getting this team to where we are today. Uh, but first and foremost, and probably the most important man, this man should be here instead of me receiving this cup up today. His name is Cormac McAnall. Also, this 
Stroll team here. We have a great background staff. I can pay enough tribute to them. Fatty Goon, Frank Campbell, Jim Curran, John Horn, Jerry McDermott, Peter Quinlevin, and the one and only Mickey Moyna. Somebody says Mickey Moyna does the work of three men. He probably does. Also, I'd like to thank our medical team. Dr. Seamus Castley, Michael Hart, Paul Feeney and Monsieur, and Louis O'Connor. It's these men, the feat that they have accomplished this year, keeping us injury free and playing football. It's unbelievable. And a big tribute to you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Finally, we come to the men that matter most, our management team. For Father Jared McAleer, our spiritual leader, Thanks very much, Father Jared. <laughs> Fergal McCann, our trainer. Fergal came in this year, and he definitely had a hard job, job to follow. He got us, and he kept us fresh for 10 games. A lot of people said we were going to tire, but if you have Fergal McCann training you, you'll never tire. Thanks very much, Fergal. For Tony Donnelly, they suspended you for today, but that doesn't matter. You've been in the background for quite a few years now. Now you're getting your just recognition. The only one thing I can say about Tony, whenever Tony talks, everybody listens. Thanks, Tony. Finally, to the boss, Mickey Hart. What more can you say about this man? What he has done for throwing football, beggar's belief. He kept us believing through the bad days this season. Whenever it was looking dodgy enough, he kept us. He believed in us. Um, and received a lot of undeserved criticism throughout the year. But Mickey, it makes it all the more worthwhile now. I cannot put any words, but this team thinks about you. You're just one in a million. Thanks very much, Mickey. I'm sure you're glad I'm getting near the end now. I want to thank a Kerry team. Kerry is a team that we aspire to. They're there every year. They're thereabouts. They were great all Ireland champions last year. So they were. And we knew we were going to have a tough game today. And we definitely did. I want to give three cheers for Kerry. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! I think it's now time to bring Sam back to Drew. the photographs that are going to make the headlines in the papers tomorrow morning. Brian Doher, the Tyrone captain with the Sam McGuire Cup for the second time for the county of Tyrone in three years. Okay,